Hey guys, welcome back to the Reclamation Podcast, where our goal is to help you reclaim good practices for life and leadership in Christ. If we haven't met yet, my name is Tony and I'm your host and I care deeply and passionately about helping you connect with Jesus in practical ways. Today on the podcast, Aaron Conrad. Aaron is a fellow podcast host. He's a CEO. He was in ministry. He's held so many leadership positions over the last 30 years. This conversation is full of nuggets. Easy for me to say. Aaron is one of the guys that you just need to hear his heart. He talks about what it means to be in ministry. He talks about the king of restlessness, which I I love that title he gave himself. And about his intentionality, about how he wants to be oxygen to people. Um, He wants to help people see the world in a new way. So I, I loved, loved, loved this conversation. My favorite quote is probably that the God of the mountain is also the God of the valley. So now without any further ado, here's my conversation with Aaron Conrad. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the podcast. I'm so excited today to have fellow podcaster, CEO, entrepreneur extraordinaire. Aaron, thank you so much for being here today. Man, it is such an honor. Uh, I don't I don't sit on this side of the microphone very often, uh, or I guess the interviewing spot, and, and it's uh, it's just an honor to be here. I'm really excited. I am too. We got to know each other uh, last week when uh, I recorded an episode for your show. We got introduced through a mutual friend, and so... Um, Man, I'm, I'm really excited to jump into your story. And one of the places that I love to start is kind of from a macro perspective. And so I, I love to ask people the question, and it's where we're going to start today. H- how would you describe the calling that God has placed on your life? It's a very interesting question. And I, I think um, I spent some time in ministry. I think we talked about that uh, last week. Um, spent a little time in ministry and found that um, ultimately I found that you don't have to be air quotes in ministry to be in ministry. Um, Mm. You can be in ministry anywhere. And so, uh, you know, when I left the opportunity that I was in, in in ministry with the church, um, you know, I've still not given up on or gotten away from uh, my love for seeing others come to Christ, seeing others um, just, just, you know, find faith in all that comes with that. And so, uh, you know, I try to do that in any way I can, how I live my life, whether it's at the local hardware store, picking up something for a project, when I run into somebody, uh, whether it's through what I put on social media, um, you know, anywhere I, anywhere I can have any voice, I try that. I try to make that voice a positive voice and something that points back to Christ. Well, one of the things I noticed as I was kind of doing a, a deeper dive into your life, at least what's on the internet life, you know what I mean? <laughs> <It's> scary. <laughs> is that you've done you've done a number of different things, right? You've pivoted multiple times in your career. And so uh, I, I was kind of like wondering, how do you know when the right time to pivot is? Well, sometimes you're uh, forced to do so. <laughs> and sometimes um, maybe you're called to do so. And sometimes there's just a, a stirring. Uh, for me, I'm, I've been called the king of restless, actually, by a guy that lives in Centerville, not Chris. Mm. There's somebody else that lives in Centerville that once called me the king of restless, and uh, I think that's a fair that's a fair analogy. Um, I, I get restless, I get bored, and and I think that's been part of pivoting at times. Part of it's just been toxic cultures that um, just wasn't doing me or my family any good, and. Um, yeah, I, I, last week somebody told me healthy parents create healthy families or something mm. like that. I probably just destroyed his quote, but it was something along those lines. And I think that includes your mental health as well. And, um, you know, uh, I got rift one time. So that's why I say sometimes you don't have the choice, uh, you know, just a downsizing um, at a Fortune 500 company. Uh, a couple of times I just decided it was time to go uh, for my own mental health and my own wealth, my own wellness. What's the origin story behind the Unscripted Collective? And and maybe f- for uh, the podcast family, you could kind of give uh, an overview of what the Unscripted, Coll- Unscripted Collective is and, and how it began. How did you birth this new enterprise? Well, speaking of pivots, uh, we rebranded, I think, three times in the first year. Oh, wow. Um, just trying to figure out who we were. So uh, I think the origin was this. I, I, well, I'll start with the podcast. The podcast is kind of the little engine in this 
vehicle <laughs> that we have. And it started during the pandemic. I was bored. Um, I didn't even know what a podcast was. I don't listen to them. I don't know how they're supposed to sound. I didn't know anything about it. I just, uh, I, the world was really kind of on fire, literally. Uh, there was a lot of racial tension and things. And so I reached out to some friends that were on the Columbus Destroyers. And I just said, hey, guys, let's hop on a Zoom call and just talk about how we can be better um, mm. as people. You know, not not argue, but but talk about, you know, your perspective and our perspective. And and let's just start there. And we did. And it, it had a lot of success. And so people were like, that was really good. You should do another one with this and that. And so it started there and it just kept growing, growing, growing. In the meantime, I was with, uh, I had left one position, um, just a toxic culture that I needed to do for myself. It was time. Uh, it was literally, um, it was killing me, the job. It was, uh, I, I literally was, I lost two years of my life in, and this is crazy. I lost two years of my life in this haze mm. that uh, my daughter I was talking a few months ago when she was talking about a, an old boyfriend that she had and she mentioned his name and I'm like, who is this? And she was like, dad, like we dated for like two months. And I was like, don't remember him. She was like, dad, you and mom went out with his parents one time. And I'm like, I literally do not remember this. Wow. And that was when I look back at that and I've had other events that, that said like, I literally was just existing and that's scary that you can just coast through life and miss so much life. So left that job, went to another one, was there about six months, just helping out, uh, doing some content things, things like that. And we, the owner came to me one day and we just went for a walk and he said, your heart's not here, man. He was like, you, your vision, and not in a bad way. He was just like, your vision, um, you know, where you want to go. And he said, I, I want to set you free to do that. Um, and it was, a, it was a friendship talk. It wasn't a, you know, owner firing you. It was literally us just walking and having a talk one day. And he said, man, I, I want to cut you loose to do that. So I leave and I just have this, uh, not sure what I'm going to do, but I had this piece and you know, that's kind of hard when you call your wife and say, Hey, um, I'm not going to go get another job. Like I don't want to work for anybody anymore. I mm -hmm. don't want to do this again. I, I want to not feel like I feel today or like we've felt in the past. I just, want to do my own thing. And she, um, you know, she really has been an amazing support throughout. Never once complaining. Um, you know, those scary times you checks aren't every Friday or every other Friday. Uh, sometimes they're big when you get them and you got to ride those out. And she's just been so patient and it's been awesome. So, um, sorry for that long winded answer, but I think it builds up to where, uh, where we are. We started, uh, we were going to do content creation, uh, we had big visions of doing um, a speaking tour with not sure. myself, but other people. Uh, we were going to be an agency. Uh, we just had all these ideas and they were kind of all over the place. And I think that's why we rebranded a few times. We've really got it down to a centralized focus now of what we're really, really good at. And that's websites, uh, hopefully podcasting, uh, podcast coaching. And uh, now we get into merchandise because merchandise for podcasters is a really hard, it's, it's, there's a ton of them. I mean, there's so many yeah. different merchandise places, but they want you to order stock and ha and then, then you're sitting on the stock and you got to ship it out. And there's, you know, and you have all these different things. And so we've created this thing called unscripted merch where people just say it's a warehouse basically for people, not a physical warehouse. It's on the, on the internet. We set up their store for them. Um, everything's print on demand ships out, goes to directly to the customer. You don't have to. So it's been very helpful. So we really have laser focused on those three things. And that's why, we have the collective, it's because the collective group of those those three things. One of the things I've noticed about you and your story is that you're surrounded by guys all the time, right? You've got, <laughs> like, I mean, um, you know, we were connected through a friend who would call you one of his best friends, and then you obviously have this incredible relationship with Mark Price where you guys are doing all these things together. Gary Miracle, who's been on this podcast, and is, uh, you know, just there's a lot of guys who are like, Aaron's my dog. Um, <laughs> talk to me a little bit about the importance of community in your life and, and how do you know when it's time to bring somebody into that inner sanctum? It's great. Uh, I, I've always believed that we are, we, friendships are like, there's two kinds of people when it comes to friendships. They're either a mile wide or an inch deep or an inch wide and a mile deep. Hmm. And by that, I mean that I think you either have a ton of friends, but they're not real deep. The, the relationships are, you know, they, they are what they are. They're just about an inch deep. They're just, 
you know, tons and tons of friends. Um, and then there's, you know, other people that just don't have a lot of friends, but the ones they have are so entrenched and deep. And it's funny because I think I fall like right in the middle of both of those, you know, uh, even though it's my philosophy, I don't, I don't know that I have that way, but here's what I've learned from Mark Price. Um, he is an amazing man. Um, I was a huge fan of his. I was his, you know, biggest fan growing up. I'm sure he hears it all the time, but uh, I was really a big fan of him, his faith and his message and his witness. And uh, obviously his basketball is pretty good too, <laughs> yeah. but uh, you know, getting to know him more and more, uh, and I, I'm sure he would be okay with me saying this because we've said it on his podcast. Um, his circle is very, very small and he's very, very intentional with that. Now, some of that's, he's a, you know, he's a star, so he has to do that. Um, but at the same time, I have a feeling even if he would have never played basketball and if he was a, a teacher, whatever it might be, he would be the same way. It's just his core belief. It's the way that he lives his life. And I'm learning a lot from him on that, that, um, you really got to tighten that circle. And that doesn't mean you exclude people. I think it just means that, um, you really identify your village, so to speak, and then you got to lean on them. And that's something mm -hmm. I'm not good at. Um, I have a ton of friends, like you said, great friends, deep friends, but I've never been very good at leaning on them. Um, you know, and, and so I, I think I'm learning more that I got to do that. We can't go Lone Ranger all the time and be there for everybody else. Um, Ed Sharon has a song that starts out that says, uh, I gave all my oxygen to people who could breathe. Yeah. And I heard that one day. I was actually in a bobcat <laughs> shoveling snow. And uh, I, I heard that and I literally had to stop the bobcat because I was crying. I was just... Mm. It broke me down. It was also in that same season I talked about a few minutes ago. Um, so it kind of told you where I was, but that's how I felt, you know, and I think we can do that, man. We can just give all of our oxygen to people that can breathe and, and not give any to ourselves. And before we know it, we haven't taken care of ourselves a little bit and that's a fine line. You don't want to be selfish, but you know what I mean? That's, it's like, it's the airplane analogy yeah. where they tell you to, you know, put your mask on first because you're not going to be any good to, anyone else if you don't have your mask on. And so, um, long answer, but that's, that's what I really try to do within friendships uh, and a pivot <laughs> is your word again, that I've made over the last probably year is to really tighten the circle. Um, we can have a lot of friends, but, but that circles is pretty tight. One of the things that we say around here a lot is that if you're not dedicated to your disciplines, you'll be destroyed by your distractions. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, uh, one of the things I hear in, in just the rhythms of your life is that you do have some intentional rhythms or that be new with your friends or with some of the other things that you do and, and how you spend your time. You're a creator. You're creating all the time between the podcast world and the writing that you do and um, creating you know the websites and the merch and all those things. What are some of the, your rhythms that you do to stay connected to God, to stay connected to your family? And I mean, because being an entrepreneur means that you can be um, all consumed all the time. Right. So talk to me a little bit about what your rhythms are and how do you know when you're in a good place versus when you're off track? Uh, a lot of it has to do with, um, again, I point back to that same job because I got into some really bad habits um, that, you know, caused me to gain a ton of weight. Um, again, it just, and it's, it wasn't their fault. It was my outward expression, inward expression, both of where I was at in life. And so again, coming out of that season, the last two years really has just been kind of rebuilding myself a little bit, you know, um, rebuilding those, that circle of friendship, spending time in the word in the morning. Uh, I got worship music on a lot uh, because I just, that's, I'm a music lover. <laughs> and so uh, it, it really speaks to me. Um, you know, I have a text, I have several text group uh, with friends where we encourage each other, tell each other good morning. Uh, if we found a worship song, that's great. We'll send that along or a, a lyric or a, a verse, um, you know, encouraging one another that way. I think that those touch points throughout the day are very helpful. A little different now that we're um, empty nesters. So hmm. uh, it's just my wife and I, and, and um, she's staying very busy. And, and uh, But we try to have dinner at night, even when we had kids. We still try to have dinner together at night. And, um, you know, some nights like last night, we, we just couldn't. We had too many things going on at one time. But uh, we do try to have dinner at night and just be intentional with that. 
came off of a great summer with uh, with my girls. My son, yeah. you know, uh, is up up in Mount Vernon now, lives up there. But uh, my girls were home, and we just had such a great summer together. It was because I felt like I was kind of back, you know, I'm being their dad and caring about what they care about, like if they have a boyfriend for two months and those kind of things. We just had such a wonderful summer, and it it feels good to to pour into the things that I care about because uh, ultimately – this podcast, you know, my podcast, um, my company, you know, our, our merch site, website, that's all going to go away. Nobody's going to care about that. They won't remember that. Um, you know, and hopefully uh, my legacy will be with my family and how I helped others. Well, one of the things I'm hearing now in your story is that this kind of um, from your lowest low to where you are now, which I mean, I don't hopefully not your highest high ever, but like in a really healthy spot. Mm -hmm. is this kind of story of your own redemption. I, I'm always curious in, in kind of seasons like this, now that you have the ability to kind of look in hindsight and go look at it. And um, w what did you learn about God in, in that season of going from toxic culture at this place to now CEO of a fast growing company or hopefully just a growing company or, right. you know, like, right. um, what have you learned about the Lord in that process? The God of your mountain is the God of your valley. Mm. Tell me more about that. I just, I think we, we love him on the mountain. We love him, man. We yeah. love him, you know, praise God. Thank you, God. Right. Um, but he's also the God of your valley. And we tend to, for me, I shouldn't say we, I know I tended to become self-reliant, try to, do things, everything on my own. And I forget that the guy that I praised when I was at the top of the mountain is also the guy that's right there next to me in that valley. And there's a reason why I'm walking through that valley. Um, it's just important to me. And that's something I really have leaned into is that the God of your mountain is the God of your valley. And uh, the other thing I would say is that I, not to quote all Mav City songs, but um, to be content in any circumstance. Hmm. in any circumstance uh, and to quote mercy me and say, even if, yeah, even if, even if I couldn't have left that job and had to stay there, even if that he's the God of my Valley and he's right beside me and um, he has never left me. I was the one that said, okay, I got to fix this myself. I got to do this myself. And so uh, just a few different, <laughs> again, I'm a big music guy and those are all lyrics from songs, but um I think they're all rooted in important um, things for me personally, and, and I believe for others as well. That's beautifully stated. Um, you mentioned your girls a little bit ago and, and mm -hmm. your son. Um, your kids are all a little bit older than mine, so you're just a little bit further ahead in the journey. One of the things I noticed on your socials is how connected you are, or at least have been recently, with um, with your daughter and Mm -hmm. You guys are both Swifties and you're, you're whole you're doing all the videos and like, uh, maybe Swifties is an overstatement. I don't know. I'm a like Swifty dad, I own that. I yeah. That. I, I love it. Uh, there's lots of parents listening right now who feel like they have no connection with their kids. Yeah. Right. They just, they're struggling. Maybe they, maybe they're in the phase of a haze of a, a toxic culture. Like you were a couple of years yeah. ago. Yeah. Um, w what are some of the, what what's advice that you would give a parent who feels like they don't know their kid right now? Uh, I, this is my answer always. And it's, I mean it as genuinely as I can. I get about 1% credit for any good that's in our kids. My wife gets 99 uh, <laughs> because I just screwed those kids up real bad. <laughs> I say that. And I mean that genuinely that being said, um, I, I actually did a little, TikTok real thing. Uh, I don't know, a couple weeks ago, because my wife and I were at church on a Sunday morning and there was this baby in front of us. It was right before my girls left for school. This is like the same week. And, uh, this baby kept staring at me. It was this little, just this cutest little baby girl. Hmm. And she's staring at me this whole time. And I just started thinking about it. Probably wasn't paying attention <laughs> to the sermon or something, but I was thinking about how back to my girls and, and my son, when they're, you know, when they're babies and they're toddlers, you know, we lay on the floor with them. And we're, we're at their level, you know, we're whatever. Yeah. And they start crawling and we start crawling right with them. We're at their level. And then they, you know, ride bikes. They learn to ride bikes and we're leaning over with them, teaching them how to ride a bike. And at th my point in all of it was that we go to their level. 
uh, from the time they're born till sometimes my son's six, three, I think. So he, I'm, we're not on the same level anymore <laughs> unless I get up on a booster. But, um, but you know what I mean? Uh, we, we look them eye to eye when they're, you know, older and they're in high school. And now that they're out of high school, you know, now they're, we're on the same level. I, I th the point was, I, I think we go to their level. And so that's my encouragement to any parent is go to their level, get interested in what they're interested in. You know what I mean? And that, that sounds really simple, but like, Hey, I like Taylor Swift. She's great, but I don't, I like Taylor Swift because my daughter loved Taylor Swift and got caught up in the ears. There's a poster behind me for goodness sake. I got a hoodie and everything. I got a tattoo of it. But, uh, so maybe we went a little overboard on the Swifty <laughs> thing, but so that's not my encouragement to parents is don't run out and get tattoos with your daughter of Tw Taylor Swift. But no, you know, it was actually the, the tattoo says I had the time of my life fighting dragons with you, which is a Taylor Swift quote. And it was actually less about Taylor Swift. And it was more about the fact that I wanted them to know that I've had the time of my life fighting dragons with them. Yeah. And that's the other thing I would say is we all have our dragons and they all look different for each person. Um, but I've had the time of my life, uh, fighting dragons with my kids. I've loved every minute of it and, and doesn't mean it's always easy. Um, you know, we've had things in our home, uh, they've had their struggles, um, that were really tough, really hard, but, um, being intentional, being at their level and then just fight like crazy for their hearts. Hey guys, just pausing this conversation with Aaron to remind you to check out our brand new website, follow the number two, leadcoaching.com. Follow the lead coaching is my coaching and strategic planning business, and I am helping leaders all over the U.S. with what it means to live out their faith and be strategic in their choices in work, life, and home. If this is you, if you're a Christian executive and you want to take the next step, if you want to get unstuck, if you want to learn what it means to live out your faith on an everyday basis, Hey, hit me up. I'd love to work with you. Go to follow the number two leadcoaching.com, fill out our request form, and I will get back with you very, very shortly. As always, guys, I'm extremely honored and humbled for the opportunity to work with so many of you already, and uh, you might be next. So hit me up, follow the number two leadcoaching.com. Now, let's finish up my conversation with Aaron Conrad. Uh, I actually knew about the tattoo from your blog, right? And so <laughs> we'll. Right. We'll link to that in the show notes so that way you guys can all check out his blog. <laughs> but it's, uh, you got it tattooed on your forearm. How much did that hurt? Uh, it wasn't terrible. I, I, I have several. Uh, so hopefully I'm not, you know, hopefully it's a judgment free zone. I got, no, no, no. I've, I've, I, I've got tons as well. Like okay, I've got, all right. I, but I was thinking about that forearm, all the lettering on the forearm bone. Yeah, it was terrible. Have, Okay. All right. It wasn't terrible. I thought it would be. It wasn't. The, the most painful one I have is the wristband ones that I have. Yeah. Um, it's, uh, it was incredibly painful and I actually already had one. It, I had like a very thin line one all the way around and then a, a thicker line beside it. And I decided that I wanted to make the thin line like a sharp, like, you know, fatter line. Sure. <laughs> so, um, that one hurt a lot. Um, I was actually, I had, there was actually blood shed on that one and uh, it took a while to heal. And when we went back for another one, he had to clean up some spots cause it just, anyway, not to get too, too into tattoos, but, yeah, yeah. but no, that one hurt a lot. That one hurt the most. Um, but it's, it's a funny, when you say it hurt, like it hurt at the moment, but then it's, sure, right. it's you know, no big deal. That's, I, yeah. we, my wife and I got ring tattoos. Oh, nice. Yeah. And, uh, and it was, it, there's like 20 seconds of acute. Yeah. It really is. Feelings. And I, then, <laughs> I saw a video the other day where it was slowed down to these, and it was magnified and slowed down, and they were putting it on like a, I don't know, it's a piece of gel or something, so you could see what actually happened. It's not something you want to watch no, it sounds before horrible. you go get one. Right. It, it, and it looks horrible when it's zoomed in like to the craziest degrees possible. It was not something I want to see again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The squirrel, by the way. That was a complete squirrel moment. <laughs> no, you're fine. <laughs> um, the reason I brought up the blog is because you, you've been a very consistent writer for a long time. And it, writing is one of those skills that I think makes leaders uh, gain clarity in their life. I'm, I'm curious what your rhythm of writing is, how you practice it, uh, and, and kind of where all that has kind of led you in your life. People have given me a ton of grace. I started blogging when blogging wasn't cool. 
like on blog like spot yeah, yeah like blog spot <laughs> right? with google and yeah and then i moved i was on wordpress when you had to like code code WordPress. oh sure like sure. you know what i'm saying because it wasn't this whole what you see is what you get type editor um so i go back that far and i was really consistent like every day and then i just got to a place where i was like i don't and i just feel the pressure to I, I, I do live in the imposter syndrome. I don't know if you've figured that out yet, but uh, I think we talked about that maybe yeah. last week too. Um, and so I really found the imposter syndrome there where it was like, I got to come up with a new one. I got to nail it every day. That that post has to be. So I give actual writers, um, you know, a lot of credit because it's difficult to, mm -hmm. you know, nail it every single time. But a lot of times it was just, I was really writing a lot when my kids were young because I was seeing so much and learning so much from raising them. Um, that is so tied to our faith as well. That reflection of, you know, I would, uh, you know, you look at them and they're like, why did you do that? And you're like, well, I think God probably says the same thing to me a lot. <laughs> like, why would you do that? You know what I mean? Or, or you tell them, Hey, I've written ones about, you know, telling them, you know, no to something or, Hey, don't do that or whatever. And then they turn around and do it. And you're like, well, I mean, I told you it was going to happen, <laughs> you know? And, um, we see that a lot, I think, in our faith too. You know, not that God shames us or anything like that, but He is our Father, and I'm their Father, and there's learning and consequences and all those things. So anyway, that's where I, I did a lot of that writing there. And then honestly, I felt like blogs kind of became uncool again. Like they were they were so hot mm. for a long time, and I think podcasts came along, and and kind of replaced blogging first there was micro blogging just the yeah. short little sure sure, sure and, yeah you know and now you got instagram and so all these other things kind of came along that suddenly blogging wasn't people weren't reading our, our attention spans have now gone to 15 to 30 second reels versus a long page blog and so i've got i got more into that obviously the podcast and so i kind of i don't say walked away but it just sat there kind of dormant and now i just write sporadically if something in, inspires me i'll you know, put something up. Uh, but I don't write like as much as I used to because I just think we live in a world where, yeah, um, people still read them, but not to the level that they used to. Now we watch a video or a, a, an Instagram picture with a little description on it says everything that a blog post would have said before. You know, you and I are in interesting career fields where we have, um, uh, a, I'm going to use air quotes here, a platform, <laughs> right? Like, yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and people, people listen to the words that you say and they read the words that you say and they, um, they respond, right. Whether that's, mm -hmm. you know, that activity you did naming your bike or like, you know, <laughs> yeah. Posting TikToks with your daughter about the era's movie, right? Like what, whatever it is, whatever it is. Yeah. Um, as a leader who, who's led in, in multiple different places and spaces for so long, and I, I'm not calling you old. I'm just saying experience, it's right? Fine. Like, <laughs> <It's fine. laughs> as it was coming out of my mouth, I was like, oh, that wasn't fine. diplomatic at all, yeah. but we're I here now. So, well. I um, it well, it's fine. <laughs> so with all of that in mind, what are, what are some of the thoughts that you have about, um, leading your movement, right? So the, you know, you basically are, are kind of doing this unscripted movement and you've got a tribe of people that good, bad, or ugly are, are watching or following what you're doing. How do you hold the tension of all of that, um, in, in your life and in, you know, being cognizant of what that means? Uh, Manny, a homie from good, uh, Samaritan's feet. Um, is an amazing man. Uh, if you ever get a chance to interview him, uh, incredible man. He's very hard to get a hold of, um, but uh, an incredible man with an incredible story. And I interviewed him, I don't know, gosh, it's almost probably two years ago, a year and a half ago. And he said something I still have never, well, two people um, said things to me in, in interviews. I always, I, I always feel like I get more out of the interviews. I don't know about you, but. Sure. Um, Certainly not this one, but <laughs> I, got, I got a whole page of notes already, bro. I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, but no, I do feel like I get a lot more out of the uh, interviews than I'm certainly the, the person I'm interviewing. Um, but Manny Homie said, make sure your goals and dreams are big enough to create room for others to join you. Hmm. And I've never forgotten that because that honestly, you ask about a movement and that is what I have, I have personally witnessed is I've just tried to create space and room for others to join 
and that looks a lot of different ways. Some people have volunteered their time. Some people have um, invested in us. Some people have buy our silly merchandise, you know, whatever it might be. Listen, they share it. They sign up for a newsletter. Um, you know, and I think it's just because I've, I've welcomed them into the dream, so to speak. Yeah. And it really is. It's a dream. I, I you know, I, it, it may end tomorrow. I don't know. But uh, in the meantime, I, I want to make sure that I create space for others to join me. Um, and something else I just thought of, a guy named Joey Powell uh, lives in North Carolina. He told me something when I interviewed him. Back to your place when you asked me earlier about knowing when it's time to leave. And he said, uh, he said, you keep climbing this ladder, climbing this ladder, climbing this ladder. And he said, um, what if your ladder's against the wrong wall? Mm. And he said, you're not, it's not that you're not climbing the ladder the right way. It's that your ladder is against the wrong wall. Wow. And that was when I was still at that other place. And, um, man, that really impacted me. Cause that's what I felt like. I'm like, I'm working like crazy over here. I'm trying to do, and my ladder's against the wrong wall. Mm. And so I think what, what I've done is hopefully put my ladder against the wall that um, I enjoy doing the work and making the investment and editing late at night or chasing somebody down for an interview or, you know, it, I enjoy it. And that's a world of difference between the ladder or the wall I was climbing up before where I didn't enjoy it at all. So I don't know if that answered your question. That's no, perfect. But, it's beautiful. Yeah. 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 Um, so I, I wanted to ask this as we kind of getting closer to wrapping up here, mm -hmm. uh, a year from now, you and I, let's, let's have you back on the podcast. Right. And okay. let's say that we're, we're popping, um, grape juice or pouring coffee or whatever, <laughs> whatever your preference is popping champagne. I don't care. No. Drinking doesn't agree with me. So, uh, but like, let's say that we're celebrating the unscriptive collective a, a mm -hmm. year from now. Um, what, what are we set? What are we going to celebrate a year? Uh, you know, I think hopefully that we're still around. <laughs> so that would, that would be the best place to start is that we're still around. No, I've told everybody I, and, and you know, it, it, it we're not a huge business and I don't want to be, I don't want to have this. I don't want to be barstool sports. Sure. I just don't, I don't, I don't, I don't want to do that. I've done that. I've been there. Um, I, I want something that the people that work with and for me, like I said, I, I want them to enjoy what we do. Um, we're very lean. Uh, you know, my web contractor is a contractor. Uh, he's actually a, an old friend from back in the fortune 500 days. He just called me out of the blue one day and he's a, pretty much a co-owner. We, I make all my decisions with him. Mm -hmm. And then we have uh, a young man that has an incredible story, how, how he came into, um, the life or the, the company. It's pretty amazing. Um, but you know, and again, he's just, he's a contractor. We, it's just kind of as stuff comes in, we do that. So I don't have the huge overhead. I don't have a building I'm paying for. I mean, I'm in my own house right now. And so all that to say, you know, you do get to a place where you, you probably do need to get a consistent check coming for my wife. Again, she's been so gracious and yeah. so patient. Sure. And so, you know, so I've looked into a few things and may pick up a part-time or maybe even a full-time job, but I've already told our team, listen, we're not going to shut the doors. So I know I made that joke earlier, but we're, we're never going to quit uh, what we're doing because we have a platform and we have uh, opportunity and it may just become the best side hustle ever. And so those are real popular right now. So we may just have a side hustle where we all still do our work, but you know, like, again, my web guy has a full-time job already. Um, he works in Connecticut and he's remote. Um, so I don't know if that answers the question, but a year from now, if, if we're all, our, our families are getting fed and, you know, and those things, and we've got a nice little side hustle. If that's the worst thing it's going to be, then that's awesome. Uh, you know, and at the end of the day, are we, are we impacting people? Are we making an impact? Are yeah. we bringing joy to people's life? Are we, are we sharing the stories of people that again, I don't, I don't always, you know, I, it, yes, yeah, it's, it's been amazing to interview Grammy winning artists and directors and authors and sports stars. Um, but that necessarily wasn't the goal at the beginning. The goal was to share the story of my neighbor or Chris Maston, who still won't come on, but um, because we all have a story. Yeah. So those are never going to go out of style. And, and so many people's stories just need to be heard. And, and you know what I mean? And, the, and you don't have to be famous because your story is there for a reason and God's using it to inspire somebody. And so I wanted to give the platform stage and microphone for them to do it. Hmm. It's good. Hmm. Uh, okay, I have one more question to ask you, but before I do, I know all of my 
podcast family is going to want to find you all over the interwebs. Where is the best place that they can subscribe to the podcast and learn all things Aaron? It is Aaron Unscripted. Um, you can find that on all the Apple platform, or the podcast platforms, uh, primarily Apple, Spotify, Amazon. I think I'm on Google, all of them. So uh, you can find it there. You can find me at AaronConrad.com. A A R O N A A R O N. Can't get by without saying it. Now, Aaron A A R O N C O N R A D dot com, and um, you can find me on Twitter at Aaron Conrad. Um, I'm not a big Instagram guy. Like it's it's a necessary evil. Like sure. I know. Same with Facebook. Like I could do without those. Yeah. But they're part of the job, so to speak. So I try to put good good fun content versus all the other stuff that's out there um you know i did get myself in a little bit of trouble on the jason aldean song so <laughs> i don't know why maybe it's just in a bad mood that day or something but i i i don't get political sure. so anybody that's listening i don't get political i don't get into i really avoid a lot of topics that just i don't there's enough of those in the world they don't need another voice in the room on that and uh you know Anyway, so yeah, all the platforms, AaronConrad.com. You can find our business at MyUnscripted.com hmm. and you can find the merch warehouse at UnscriptedMerch.com. But the hub is kind of AaronConrad.com. Perfect. And we'll link to that, of course, in the, in the show you. notes. And everybody can go check that out. Make sure you hit that subscribe button wherever you listen to prog- podcasts, uh, Aaron Unscripted. Um, okay, last question is an advice question, except I'm going to ask you to go back in time and give yourself one piece of advice uh, but I get to name the season of life that you're in. Okay. I so I, I want to take you back um, to COVID when you pulled up those guys with the destroyers mm-hmm. um, and you just finished talking to those guys um, about whatever it is you talked about on that very first Zoom call. Mm-hmm. If you could pull up a chair in that younger version of yourself, look him in the eyes, hold his hands, and give him one piece of advice on what is about to come or about how he should respond or about how he should show up. What's the one thing you're telling him? You're doing the right thing. Hmm. Um, Because that younger version of myself, that person, even in the fog that I was in, which had nothing to do with COVID, <laughs> but uh, even in the fog that I was in at that time, I didn't even know what God had in store for me. Um, and that, that moment, that interview that day was the beginning of God starting to bring me out of a, a very, very dark season. And um, I think interviewing all those people, again, I got so much inspiration and life out of that. Um, that's what I would say is just keep going. Like you, you don't even, I don't, you don't even know what's ahead for you. Cause honestly, man, it's been such a ride. <laughs> it's been so awesome. And if it, to your question earlier, if it ended today, man, I, I have no complaints. I have, I have had the time of my life. I'm going to write a book by the way. I, mm. I haven't, I haven't written it yet, but do you want the title? Yeah. It's Jesus, my mom and Freddie Mercury. I can't wait. <laughs> I think I might just sell the title and that's it. Like, cause I love the title. I don't know what's going to be in it yet. No, I do. I, I've actually written about half of it. I need to finish it. But, um, yeah, I've, man, I've had, an, I've, I've lived a life that my daughter, uh, said it the other day. She's like, dad, you, it's unbelievable. Like what you, I said, no, I gotta get that book written cause it's been fun. And I think, so anyway, that didn't answer your question there, but oh, it did. It was uh, great. It's great. No, there's a lot of it uh, okay, in the blog well, too. Not a plug, not a plug, but there's a lot of it in the blog, man. I've just, people won't believe uh, it's, it's been awesome. So I love it. I would have said, keep going, man. I love it. And that'll preach any day of the week. So, he, okay, here's the plan. One, um, you, you, as soon as you get the book written, you know, you got a spot back here to start pubbing it. Yeah. That'd be great. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, podcast sell books. That's part, part of what we do. Sure. And I uh, would love to continue to just stay connected uh, as you and I both stay on this journey. It's, it's been such a joy to have you on today. And I, I can't thank you enough for your generosity of time. And, and, uh, man, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing what God does next. Yeah, man, it's been amazing. Last week's was amazing. Uh, and for everybody, uh, my interview with you is not yeah. up yet. It will be up next week. Um, I had one that I had to, to get out this week to, for a timing constraint, but yeah, um, I will have that way. one out 
I will have that one out probably on Tuesday. Uh, right so, on. yeah, that one will be out. And, and I, people, people are going to take a lot away from that. I know I did. Uh, I've been telling people that you literally figured out my entire life in about a 10 minute <laughs> space. <laughs> Seriously, everybody's got to listen. Again, not a plug. I'm not looking for stats. I'm saying everybody's got to listen because this guy, we talked for 10 minutes and he literally, basically, it was like 10 months of therapy in like a two second dis <laughs> description. Yeah. I don't even know how to explain it, but <laughs> well, you're everybody kind. I've sent that to, like I, I made a clip out of it and I've sent it to people and they're like, wow. Wow. Like seriously, man. That so you got it. So everybody's got to listen. Not again, not for stats, but you really know what you're doing, man. You you are a blessing to many, and and uh, I love that you're in this space and uh, the impact that you're having as well. Thank you, man. What a great conversation with Aaron. I just appreciate his heart. I appreciate the way he talked about doing the right thing. His steps of faith. You know, I think there are so many of us can lean into what it means to take a step of faith, like Aaron did. Guys, I'm thankful for you and staying all the way to the end of the podcast. It's just without guys and gals like you, this wouldn't be possible. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Do me a favor. Share this episode with a friend. Tell somebody that you know about the conversation that I have with Aaron today. Tell them to check out the Reclamation Podcast wherever they listen to podcasts. And as always, guys, I'm thankful for this community. And remember, if you want to follow Jesus, you must be willing to move.